Welcome to the All Speeches broadcast where me, a middle-aged man in Middle England, rambles on about the things that I've been doing this week, um, the thoughts I have about being a man and how I interact with other people, mainly men, and what men think of themselves and generally men, blah, blah, blah. Um, but this week, um, well, it's all based around all the information I get in my uh, post bag from the answers that people send me through uh, for me to write their wedding speeches. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fascinating business. Um, and I've come up with basically what I think is the number one thing that should never, ever, ever be in a wedding speech. And no grown man should really try and grapple with it unless they're a qualified academic. And that is poetry. Now, the thing about poetry is um, everyone kind of doesn't like it at school very much. I quite enjoyed it, but I was, um, I was probably in the minority. Most uh, guys don't really like poetry and then they decide 25 years after leaving school to then solve all their uh, wedding speech problems uh, by uh, doing it in rhyme, a poem. What they end up doing is uh, writing one enormous limerick uh, that has people um, hanging on for the final punchline for about 25 minutes. But it, it can be a lot more tedious than that and, um, and just absolutely nonsensical as well. Uh, this guy, he was a groom, actually, and he decided to uh, write uh, his entire groom speech as a poem, which isn't a great idea because the thing is, people don't mind the poetry bit for a couple of minutes. By the time you're going on to the 10 minute mark, they've really kind of had enough of it and they're looking up their, their friend or their, uh, their loved one saying everything in rhyme, it can be, um, it can be quite bizarre, it can be uh, um, quite an out-of-body experience um, because they won't have seen you say anything in rhyme before unless you're um, a freelance rapper, which I don't think you probably are. Anyway, um, you tend to, um, in order to fill up bits in the, uh, uh, the poem, the wedding poem, you tend to um, uh, grasp at straws. And this guy is... Uh, no different. He addresses his housing situation uh, in, his, um, in his wedding speech and um, wants us to sort of understand where he is with it and, um, and how the money situation is, um, is going. Um, for the last five years, we've saved up some money. We're keen to get our very own place. But we've not really found somewhere that we love, somewhere to call our marital base. Now, you think, well... Right, I, I, don't really, I don't really think that that should be in the wedding speech. I, don't, I, you know, I hope you find somewhere, I hope you can afford it, but I don't really care that much. I'm at the, I'm at the wedding um, and I just want to have a good time. You think that after that, he would then go on to expand about the different finance deals that he's, um, that he's tried to, uh, uh, to get, what his mortgage advisor thinks and what he'd be able to borrow, but he doesn't. He then goes into um, basically uh, how much his, uh, his future wife loves McFly. Um, which kind of leaves you wondering why you put that there in the first place. Did we really need to know that? No, we didn't. But I've, I've come to an even more startling conclusion. I thought that most grown men, when they try to write poetry, uh, it ended up being one on limerick, as I said before. But the more poems I've read by men who have no poetry writing experience, um, have never read that much poetry, but just quite like the idea of it, the more I read them, the more I've discovered that they are actually just one long big wodge of um, Oasis lyrics. Uh, because 20, 20 years ago, everyone was uh, rocking out to Definitely Maybe and What's the Story, Morning Glory. It defined a generation. That generation for, you know, they might have been 10 then, they might have been 20, whenever. They're all getting married now and they are writing all their wedding poems. Even though they don't know it, as Oasis lyrics, and if you, um, if you don't believe me, um, I'm going to attempt to um, sing parts of this poem, I can't believe I'm going to do this, I'm going to sing parts of this poem to the, what, what melody shall I do it to? Um, live Forever. I'm going to go for Live Forever. If it doesn't sound like Live Forever, I don't care, but you'll get the point, right, okay, uh, uh, the bit that he, um, the bit here, right, I'm missing that, that's on the fold. When the secrets of marriage were spoken, but you know that the answers lie inside, where the bond of true lies unbroken, so live happy forever as lovers and friends. It's the dawn of a new life for you. I can't believe it. I didn't check that out, and he didn't let that little bit rhyme at the end there. It made me look a fool. What was he thinking? See what I mean? Everything's like an Oasis lyric. Even goes on to say, 
Um, uh, tomorrow can bring you the greatest of joys, but today is a day it all starts. So if you are writing your wedding uh, poem, bad idea, but if you're, if, you're, um, if you're writing it and you think that you can put it uh, to the melody of um, any Oasis uh, record from 20 years ago from their first two albums, then it's either time to stop or it's either time to embrace it and actually put it to that and sing it. Uh, and then you'll get yourself a YouTube hit, at least a couple of thousand followers and get a little bit in the Metro maybe. Anyway, that's it from the All Speeches broadcast this week. The ramblings of a middle-aged man from Middle England. I will be back with you very shortly with some more nonsense. Goodbye. <laughs>